Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the Farm Family Business and the Dear Lord podcast. We started these guys uh, a couple months ago and we had them shared and linked through our Patreon account. And um, I've been asked if we could put the link or put them here and make them more of a relatively available, if you will, to our YouTube channel and viewers as well. And that's what we're going to do. So again, trying to take everybody's input and leads and, and make the information uh, and the business and the channel grow to fit everybody's needs. So you're going to be able to see this on Patreon and YouTube. So what, whether, whatever, wherever you started this from, welcome back to the Farm Family Business and the Dear Lord podcast here, guys. Uh, you'll have to work with me, guys. You probably, hopefully, it's not sounding like I'm in a tunnel or or trying to elevate my voice, but I'm, I am trying to elevate my voice because our wireless mics have crashed. Uh, great overseas uh, Chinese junk yet again uh, fails. So we are trying to make that switch and get some other stuff in here. But on the other on the other side of that, business goes on, right? i uh, got a chore list of things to do here and I need to be able to get this stuff done. So work with us, turn the volume up guys. If you're having trouble hearing this, that's why. And we will get it handled just as quick as we can. Uh, so the mic that I've got that I'm using now on the phone works pretty good. Um, so like I said, guys, welcome back. Um, it's been, it's been the, the week. Uh, it's, it's kind of just been crazy here and I, I got some really cool things coming for on the podcast itself here, guys, that we're going to be doing, uh, some guests. Um, the goal is, is not just have my ugly mug on here every day. Um, or not, I don't do these every day, but every time you see one of these, is to have, uh, we're going to have um, more than just me, we're going to have the uh, some guests in, and I think you guys will like that. We already had Brad on, Brad Harper there, and that was a that was a good deal. Brad opened up some eyes on some, some uh, you know, soil stuff and mineral and all of that stuff, herd health-wise, if you will, and we're going to have some more folks uh, doing the same. We are also um, in kind of our final details here that I'll touch on with the business. So I won't go into this too much. Let's do this in order, but uh, we got some stuff kind of finally out there as well. So let's just start here. Let's dive into it as they say. So the farm, uh, middle of October, um, the farm, we have a great cold front that moved in a lot of the country. If you're, if you're tuning in, you're probably in the whitetail range somewhere. You're probably experiencing some good weather this week. Uh, speaking of that guys, I'd like to touch on that. Our hearts and prayers and, and thoughts are still with everybody, like a bunch of clients down there um, that were affected by that darn storm. Uh, it's, I've, I've got some um, word actually our, uh, so North Carolina and Tennessee, especially um, we've got, uh, then Florida got hit with a second one. We've got actually Mark uh, Breitrick that works uh, with us here, his company. Promised Land Tree Service out of Western Kentucky, um, out of that Eddieville area. They are out. They do my builds for me, uh, with me, and um, they are out working um, all of that storm damage. That's what they they do. They you know they tree service and then they do um, FEMA relief stuff. Uh, it's not good, guys. So if you take a second and throw up a couple prayers to them folks and keep Mark and his crew safe. And also make sure that uh, you send some prayers to the folks that were affected by that. It's, uh, I, I think when the numbers finally come out of what actually is going on down there and the damage, I think it's going to rattle the world, um, sadly. So uh, we're hoping, we hope, we're hoping every day, praying every day for them uh, that there is some some help. Uh, I heard the other day that there's still some folks stranded. Uh, I can't even, I can't even imagine. I, I. I can't even wrap my head around what those folks are going through. So, um, the good Lord's got his hand down there with you guys and he will help you get through it. Um, so, uh, what we can do on our side is if you have anybody, I had a neighbor the other day and, uh, kudos to him, sent a whole truckload of stuff down. I didn't, I didn't hear about it quick enough before he went down. I think I'm going to try to add some stuff to that the next time they go down just to do our part. Right. Uh, so, Good weather, um, guys. We, we got hit with a good cold front here, and we are off and running on um, 
thinking about implementing some morning hunts. It's that good of weather, which is kind of uncommon, to be honest with you. Uh, for Central Kentucky, um, I had 29 on the, uh, so it was a kill, I believe it was probably a killing frost this morning here. And no, I wasn't in the tree, not to say, hey, um, somebody, you know, down the road or on the neighboring farm or something shouldn't have been. Um, guys, I just, like I've always talked about as I put that morning hunt in October so far in the back, just throw it in the back seat or back of the truck and tell things, all the stars aligned. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying there has to be a power, powerful, powerful reason for you to implement October hunts right now. And this could be one of those. And the way I didn't is because I'm still letting some, some deer trickle back in. Picked up a good buck that was round from last year. He's back. Um, just the last couple of days, uh, and there's some good deer filtering into the community. I've heard some of the neighbors talking. Um, I've heard some good things that are showing up. Um, there's been also there's been some good deer harvested. Uh, there was a really good buck. Probably seen pictures of him that I had on my social media platform. A young man, 11 year old uh, youngster, killed a giant velvet buck down the road during the uh, youth hunt. Um, or during, I'm sorry, during the bow, the bow opener uh, that weekend, I believe it was not the youth hunt. He shot it with his with his bow. So, um, great, great deal, and um, a lot of a lot of good deer around the neighborhood, guys. And I just I just don't have the I haven't made my decision on which one I want to target this year. And uh, here I am drinking coffee in the morning and just letting the good uh, come right. So the the farm itself uh, has been responding great. Um, I've got a story that we're going to touch on on the end of this with the Dear Lord segment. Part of this, uh, the farm itself, guys, I find myself this year, and I, I've got videos coming up on this, I find myself just looking at how the deer are responding to what I did, right? And I highly recommend that you do the same. Like, you know, what deer are you seeing use? Are they are they um, responding to the, uh, the same winds that you need in order to hunt those spots? Are, is all of the stars aligning? Is there, are all of your trail cameras or all your information given you, are the, are the, uh, is there a piece of the chain missing? Are all the cameras, you know, are you getting him on more than just one camera, stuff like that, like we talk about. Uh, and there's a lot of the, a lot of the property, it's not done, guys. I always, it's just kind of a joke, but I always talk about this as, um, you know, if you're, if a gentleman does a, or, you know, family does drywall, then that family's house is probably not finished in drywall. And we were excavators and, and our, our, uh, our driveway was the, uh, roughest growing up, you know, our driveway was the roughest driveway in the community. And, uh, you know, if you're a, if you're a rancher, probably your fences are worse than, than anybody's, you know, it's just, it, 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 it's just kind of attaches to that. And my farm's no different. I, you know, all my client properties are first. Uh, and then I get to the, I've only got certain, to be honest, I think I had two weeks of work that I had out of the entire year that I could do. And one of them was just a long weekend. And one of them was spent on my, uh, one of my other properties down the road. So I just, um, I just really start looking at how they're responding to what I'm doing. And I've already got a chore list going into next year on what I'm able to what I want to do, right? What I want to try to change yet for next year. I've got another mulch trail, a bleeder that I got to put in, really focusing on getting my switchgrass better. Uh, I've got a lot of soil health stuff that we're digging into uh, that Brad Harper, Harper Growing Solutions uh, is is uh, helping me with. Brad has been a blessing on that. Brad's actually going to be back down this uh, fall here. And then um, uh, what else we got? Switchgrass, food plots. Uh, I've got some, some more cedar extraction that we're going to do in some more bedding areas to let that sunlight in. The ones I did this year, it just blew up. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, the vegetation, the browse. No, I'm not going in there to take pictures for you uh, to show you right now what happened. Uh, but I've got some videos before that cedar extraction. If you look at, look back on like the uh, Built by Whitetails segments that we were doing. And... Um, them doe buddings have just blown up, guys. That cedar is such a habitat killer. It's I love it and I hate it, right? Down here, we've got red cedar. If you're tuning into this from up north, you've probably got cedar, probably common cedar or white cedar. 
No different, just a little bit taller. The red cedar is actually worse because it's lower to the ground and, and it's uh, more stems per acre. In other words, it jams more cedar in than white cedar does, when common cedar does. And uh, there, you guys, up in the northern, let's say, uh, Michigan, Wisconsin area, something like that, uh, them cedars are in the lowlands, and these darn red cedar will grow out of a rock. So they're everywhere around here because we're on a rock, right? Uh, Kentucky as a whole, but central Kentucky is pretty rocky, and uh, and they're just everywhere. But I, I tell you guys, they are. So they grow on the bottoms, they grow on the tops, they grow on the ridges, they grow everywhere. And uh, they're just habitat killers. Now, am I taking them all out? Absolutely not. If you take them all out, you got to plant some of them back in for thermal protection, right? Weather here is nowhere near as bad as it is like up in Michigan. So if you're tuning into that, are tuning into this and you're listening to that and don't take all your cedars away especially if you're in let's say northern Min or northern Min yeah northern minnesota northern wisconsin northern michigan the upper peninsula of michigan stuff like that the worst thing that you could possibly do is to get rid of all your cedars mature cedars because when those deer need that in those harsh winter conditions you want them to have so you're up there it could be balsam uh hemlock cedar something like that. So whether you're a part of the deer yard or whether you're not, uh, I really encourage you don't take that away from them because you, you are putting them, if you are going to have them deer stick there and they don't transfer to a yard, or if you are part of the deer yard, uh, you are, you're, you're doing them a lot of disservice. So don't get rid of all of it, but you have to perforate the canopy because if it's all cedar and there's no food, yes, they'll eat the cedar. But in the perfect world, they've got a ton of browse. 90% of their intake is woody browse up there, right? They gotta give them the woody browse and the only way you're gonna get it to them is release that canopy. And then um, cedars up there or the cedars, red cedars here, no different habitat killers. And uh, so don't take all of them away. Just follow my lead on that as far as watching what my areas are doing, blowing up. And thankfully here guys, only one side of my farm uh, which is why one of the reasons why I bought it because it's so diverse. One side of my farm is full of red cedar and the other side is not. It's all mature, was mature timber until I had it logged. Now it's trees and a bunch of groceries, right? A bunch of browse. Uh, two years ago I had it logged. So I've got a little bit of both. Got contour, got water in, you know, in the water holes that we put in our tanks. It's just a very diverse situation. The community as a whole is like that, right? But um, so, yeah. Farm itself, guys, uh, doing good. Some deer starting to show up. I'm on six, six, yeah, six hunts. Um, all evening hunts, haven't hunted a morning yet. And uh, like I said, if I had a reason to hunt a morning, this would have been the last two days, probably would have hunted a morning, but I'm just kind of letting things filter in. And by probably by the last uh, 10 days of the month here, I'm gonna have uh, a good idea on what I'm gonna target and I'm gonna try to get the job done. Might even get the job done this weekend coming up on the muzzleloader hunt. So um, so yeah, take that into consideration, guys. Um, really looking forward to, to being able to, uh, you know, have that opportunity with you to show you some, showcase some stuff, uh, some good hunts coming and good, good guest, um, good partners, business partners are coming down this year and uh, all in all, farm's doing well. The family side of it, guys, let's jump jump into that. Um, I ask for your prayers here a little bit. Uh, so first and foremost, let's start on, on the, the good. It's all positive, but let's start on the good. My daughter's doing great. Folks are doing great. My daughter's teaching. Uh, mom's retired. Dad's retired. Dad's in Alaska. Uh, got some word that my... Uh, that my uncle uh, was successful on a uh, great, another great, I believe this is a second moose in Alaska, two years in a row, obviously the residents up there go way back in the middle of God's country and uh, harvest, harvested a great bull up there uh, with I think like five guys in the group killed either five bulls or, or four bulls or something like that, uh, had a great hunt and uh, they did the same last year. And uh, so that was good news. Dad called and, and updated me on that the other day. And uh, Dad's doing good. Um, we're working on his health journey to help get him healed up and uh, just healthier to try to get, um, he's at that age where that is very important. 
and uh, hopefully maybe next year get him out and, and uh, try to get his his moose uh, dream as well. So he's up there right now, been raining and stuff. Uh, my uh, boy, Cy, um, won't go into great detail, guys, but if you have a, a minute to throw a prayer out there, I, I would surely appreciate that. Uh, we look forward to every Sunday. Um, he's able to call last week. Um, I, I didn't get a chance to talk with him long. The, uh, he always, the agreement that we made calls his mother first and, uh, he was able to talk to her. Um, so last week was a little bit of a struggle. Um, he started boot camp. This is week five. Um, he's out Fort Leonard Wood out there in, uh, in Missouri and he fell during a training mission, uh, training segment and, um, not sure if he broke his wrist yet or not. We'll know soon. Uh, but injured himself pretty good. And um, as parents, it's it's hard, right? It's You don't know what's going on. Uh, I know that they're taking care of him. Um, he's been seen by a doctor. Uh, so he's um, he, he needs our support, right? He needs the good Lord to step in. Because we're not really sure how that works. I had a great client. I want to send a big thank you out to him. Kevin, if you're watching this, I had a client of mine. I think I designed Kevin's property last year in Wisconsin. He's retired National Guard. And uh, Kevin was able to um, kind of help me get my mind right. Give me some tips um, on what could happen. And uh, it's just a waiting game now. Thursday, I believe, is uh, the next doctor's appointment. And we're hoping that he's... Um, we're hoping that uh, it's not broke um, because what happens if it is and he's not able to continue on with boot camp or do what they want him to do, I don't know what that answer is. And I just uh, I fear for what is the answer. So we're hoping that the good Lord steps in, keeps him healthy, keeps his mind right, and uh, we're going to get through this. And uh, the kid, he's just, uh, you know, he, he uh, gave this country six years of his life and uh, yes, it's the National Guard and, you know, whatever your feeling is about that. Um, he's going through boot camp just like anybody and, and he'd be the first one to, to volunteer to go if he had to go, uh, you know, to get deployed. Lord willing, that doesn't happen. But if it does, he knows that. Uh, and we knew that going into this. So he just needs, we just need to send him as much of the good vibes as we possibly can. And, and uh, if you could do that, I surely appreciate that, guys. It means the world to me, and I'm sure it means the world to his mother as well. Um, so uh, family side, that's kind of that, how things are going there. I've got some um, got some good friends and family that are going to be down this year hunting, and it uh, looks to be a good uh, upcoming season. Um, so the business side of it, guys, the business is going good. We are probably... Uh, it's election year, right, is what it is. No matter what side of the political fence you're on, uh, there's some goods and some bads that come with election years, right? Uh, we just roll with the punches. I had some clients that were booked for this year from last year that we couldn't get on the schedule that booked for this year. Uh, we're probably, I don't, I don't know. Are we 50%? I don't know. I'd have to look. Um, but this month is when really, really a lot of folks start calling and, and, uh, probably going in by like Thanksgiving every year. We're, um, I don't know, I wouldn't say we're hundred percent booked by then, but we're pretty booked, uh, by then. So if you have any, uh, need or, or if you're interested, I'm going to touch on something with you guys here, put that in my memory bank, not to forget here. Um, so we have some spots left to, to offer. Uh, what I do guys is I daisy chain my I daisy chain my uh, clients together. So if I start here, it might go up through, let's just say I go north, right? I go up through Michigan, end up in Wisconsin. I'll come back here last week or last year. I was on the road for, what was it? 45 days total all at one time. Usually I'm on three weeks off a week. Uh, same thing with the South. I leave here and I'll go Tennessee, work my way down into Alabama, Georgia, uh, Florida, you know, come all the way back around. And I might end up going all the way to Mississippi before I come back here or something like that. Right. Um, one thing I want to touch on, so two things, guys, there that I got notes on here, mental notes to talk with you about. If you are in, if you are, there's a there's a select couple of states, guys, every year that, that I want to always throw thanks out to. I want to throw thanks out to everybody because it's just been a blessing. But Michigan 
and Wisconsin guys have just been a blessing to me. Did 64 clients last year. Uh, I believe we did, what did we do? Uh, 12, uh, had 12 builds. I think I was in, I had four total builds, turnkey builds, you could say. And then I had, I think I had like two weeks of habitat work, you know, two days here, two days there, maybe three weeks, three weeks total, something like that, uh, over some clients across the country. So, um, work, year good high expense because of the inflation and stuff but we got through it we did what we could do and um i just want to throw a big thanks out there to everybody from wisconsin and michigan it's it's just i think 20 26 clients last year from those two states out of the 64 something like that and uh i just uh it's just crazy I, when i said states here i'm thinking um how, how many different states do they do i think i'm on my 30 some states i can't remember 30 oh 30 or 30 some different states that we've been in new this year is going to be um not new i've been in oklahoma before but a new area in oklahoma i've got some texas stuff pending i've uh, been in texas before done some work in texas doing hopefully going to do some more i've got a main property pending this year um so and a lot of the other ones are you know the southeast uh you know that that um Alabama's been great too. Alabama's another one, guys, that really had, uh, you know, some folks uh, last couple of years down there. Um, the Southeast, guys, if you're watching this from the Southeast, it's such, the way that I design properties, if, if, if we could ever get more of that accomplished, I love the Southeast. I just, I've always been a fan of it. Uh, but as far as the weather in the country, a lot of parts of like, I'm, I'm gonna just tell you this, guys, right now, uh, Alabama, Georgia, there's so many spots down there, whether a lot of folks know this or not, that if I blindfolded you there and dropped you, if you were from the Southeast, dropped you off in Michigan, you'd swear you were at home, right? You'd swear that you were in there. It's, there's a lot of the pines, uh, hardwood stuff down there. Um, and it looks a lot, it looks a lot like that. Now there is some difference to it as well about how they manage the marketing, marketable pine timber and stuff. But all in all, uh, it's just, the Southeast, the way that I design guys and what I help folks do is you're sitting on a gold mine. It's got some hurdles because of some, a lot of the stuff down there is there's so much focus on that marketable pine. Um, but it, on the deer hunting side of it to have best of both worlds, you can definitely do that. Uh, so reach out to me guys. We did, uh, a couple really nice properties last year. Um, and one really big property. Uh, 2,500 acres, I believe, and then that we're working on still in segments. Uh, we did a couple, one in north, northern part of the state. I was in, I, I think I did, what, six Alabama clients last year, something like that, and um, it was great. So, uh, surely appreciate everybody at the end of the day, story about that, right? Just appreciate everybody, kind of give you a little insight of what we got going on, where we're going to be, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the, uh, opportunity that we have to still get on the books with us um and if you're if you're interested reach out october is a big month for us and uh we we'll look forward to hearing hearing from you guys and we'll go from there um one of the things i wanted to talk about was this uh the mental note that i had there right um the i had a client reach out the other day a potential client and he said i know you probably think i'm just a tire kicker by asking this Guys, that's been one of my terms. I've It's never really sat well with me. And to be honest with you, I used to sell vehicles. Um, and the tire kicker thing never sat well with me. And the reason for that is, I'm going to share this with you, is I think if you reach out and you have a question about something, it means that you're, you're, you're interested in that. Or you might not, car right, that's where the term came from. You might not be ready to buy that day, and that was fine with me. A lot of salesmen, if you're not ready to buy, they just walk away. You never hear from them again. I wasn't that guy, and I'm not that guy now with my business uh, here. I was doing this same thing when I was working there, uh, and I treated it the same, and it's just made me, I believe, a well-rounded. Guys, if you have any questions, if you have any concerns, uh, you want to get to know me better, you want to get to know how I, what I offer better, all of this stuff, uh, reach out and talk uh, strategy with me. Um, I can't design anything from afar. I won't design anything from afar, but I can answer some questions. 
Um, and a lot of them folks that are, you know, maybe that you feel or you've been told tire kicker, whatever that is, um, a lot of those folks come back and end up being clients or they refer somebody to me. It's all good. I don't, I don't look at any, there's no, how do they say that, right? What's that old saying is there's no, uh, there's no bad question. There's no question. That's a dumb question kind of thing, something like that. Right. So, um, I, this time of the year is super busy guys. It's crazy. Um, we're in deer season, obviously, so I'm spending some time in the woods, but I'm also spending time emails, phone calls, uh, booking, getting all the schedules right, uh, guests in and out of camp. It's it's a crazy time of the year, but I'll do my best to try to get back with you. I've got a couple phone calls i got to return today after we get done shooting this. Um, so, yeah, so don't don't look at that, guys, as uh, you can't ask a question because you're not going to, you're, you're just a tire kicker. And I, I don't want that to ever be part of this. I want folks to be able to, uh, folks I've worked with or potentially work with, I want you guys to be able to reach out and ask those questions. So uh, feel free to do that, to do so. Um, I'm gonna share something with you here, guys, on the next portion, which is the Dear Lord portion of our farm family business and the Dear Lord. Uh, last night, um, 17 foot in a tree stand, not 20 foot closer to the Lord, like I always talk about, 17 foot tree stand last night. Uh, that's actually a ladder stand, one of our primal ladder stands. Hate the name, love the stand. Uh, for the budget value of them and what they offer. Sitting in the stand last night, guys, you could, this cold front that came through, you couldn't script a better evening sit. Just, it was just a blessing to be out there, right? Got in, slid into the stand, not bumping any deer. Uh, it was, what was it going to be? 43 degrees before dark. Wind was blowing a little bit. Calm down right before dark. I mean, if you could write a textbook October early season hunt, it had it, right? I'm in the stand 20, 20 minutes, half hour. I don't know what it was. Not long. And, uh, heard some deer coming. Looked down. Thought it was deer, right? Looked down at the base of my stand. Here are two male pit bulls. Uh... Boy, I tell you, it's a hard, hard thing. Uh, the old me, they didn't look aggressive, but the old me would have got down. I would. I'm not into the you know dispensing of dogs at all, uh, unless it's a self defense thing. Uh, but this wasn't. Obviously, I was in the tree. They were on the ground, um, and sitting there thinking, you know, all of this work, all this time, all this preparation. Who's darn dogs are these you know just uh and to be honest with you i had pictures of three other dogs earlier in the morning uh and it's just you know be the neighbor that keeps your dogs inside or you know penned up or something during this time of the year guys you it's just and i know a lot of folks watching this you probably know and you're not the ones doing this but it's just a it's just a hard hard deal so anyways story goes on i sit there Take a deep breath, they leave obviously, and they were on a deer trail and they left and about just a couple minutes later, I'm just sitting there, put my hands in my lap, had a good talk with the good Lord. It's like, please handle this. I just work all year long. I don't know what to do, right? Uh, I don't want to ruin this hunt, this cold front coming in. Do you get out of the stand? Do you not? And I want to enjoy these hunts, right? It's not about the harvest to me. It's about watching deer, how they navigate my designs, learning so you guys learn what I learn, uh, you know, looking at the vegetation, the regeneration in my in my habitat pockets, you know, looking at the food plots and, and trying to just put all the pieces together to make the farm as best I possibly can. And here are these darn dogs running through it, chasing all these away. Took a deep breath, turned it over to the man upstairs, right? The deer lord. 20 minutes later, look up, here they come, running back through. And I actually got them to stop, so they seen me, uh, taking my hat off, and whipped it on my leg, and they stopped. They made eye contact with me, and they were gone. So, uh, you, you guys will get a chuckle out of this one. So, 10 minutes later, that's on the back side of the farm. 10 minutes later, my security camera goes off at the house. Look, and the biggest, the Brindle, the Brindle uh, pit bull, he's on my, you might as well say my front steps, right outside of my front door and drops a big old load right there in front of it. Just, just adding salt, just put that old knife right in there, right? Adding the old salt to injury. And I thought, you know, 
Uh, you're really testing me here, buddy. You're really testing me. Cross my hands again. This was at like, I don't even know what it was, early. 3.30, 4 o'clock. And I just said, I just had a good talk with the good Lord. Let me enjoy the hunts. We'll handle it. If you can handle it, we'll get through it. It's not the dog's fault. It's the it's the dog owner's fault. Something may have happened. Look for the good, right? I enjoyed the rest of my hunt. I actually texted a friend of mine, said, probably sitting here for no reason, because the darn dogs ran through, and just trying to find the good in the hunt, right? I ended up seeing a doe and two fawns is all I seen out of a spot that I've never been skunked out of. If I go to that stand, there's a darn good reason I'm going to that stand, and uh, it's it just came to an end, right? Beautiful, beautiful sit though. And uh, so left there, <clears throat> left, actually got out of, out of the farm, and went bump, no deer or nothing. It was really good sit. Get back up here, uh, flip the trail cameras on and the cell cams and they're not only here, they were on my farm across the road, they were on the, my lease down the road. And uh, man, I just, you, you're just, Boy, the devil is just trying to steer you to be that evil man. And <laughs> I was not happy, right? Take a deep breath. Uh, so here's here's the deal, guys, where this is going. I had a client, a good friend of mine, client, just half hour north of here. I actually text him those pictures because he was dealing with a dog issue about a week ago and on his farm. And it's not the same dogs half hour north of here. Text him and I said, darn you, you jinxed me, right, as a joke. He he calls and he said, are you kidding me? I'm like, no. He's like, man, I'm sorry, you know, one of those things, I jinxed you. And he said, I got something to share with you. He said, I was actually, he's a good religious Christian man. And so, Sean, if you're watching this, uh, this this will connect with you, obviously. I uh, appreciate, appreciate you and your friendship. And uh, so I text him and he said he was in. Bible study they had last Sunday. They had a Bible study at their house and the church service kind of Bible study at their house. And the topic was trying to be the salt of the earth and trying to be the, the better and look for the good. And, and I don't know the exact definition of that study, but it was pretty much look for the good in things, not look for the bad and try to be the good person. And at the end of it, they all looked to Sean because he had shared that story with them about the dogs on his property that he wasn't impressed with. And it was kind of this joking point, like, okay, what are you going to do? You know, we just did this Bible study. Are you going to be the one that, that jumped to the plate, guys? He told me that, and my, I just got this, like, cold chill. And the reason for that is um, there's always, you, you, you get in this bubble of life, right? And, like, right now, you wait all year, and you, you build these properties, and you just put so much emphasis into that, and you put so much money, time, sweat equity into it, and something like the dog comes in and can just totally, does it ruin the farm? No, but it ruins the hunt. Could it ruin the hunt? I had deer all through last night on cameras again, whatever, but... I've had cattle issues, neighbors' cattle getting out on one of my other farms, and it's just never ending. And it really, you always think that you're, it's horrible, right? And I, I'm not the guy to compound problems on problems on problems because if you do that, more problems get worse. Um, excuse me, the older I get, the more I try to focus on the good and outweigh the bad, and somehow, some way, it always works out, right? And when Sean told me that last night, it was just like, other people are dealing with things too, right? And it, it was just a direct connection to me, guys, that I, I just, the message is this. Try to find the good in these things and always remember that there's somebody else that has something that's very similar to what you're going through or worse. I always like to think of it as somebody that's going through something worse than I'm going through. Are the dogs on my property? Uh... It's not even a fraction. It's not even a grain of salt compared to what these folks in the in the south in the southeast or this these folks uh, in uh, you know North Carolina and Tennessee are going through right now. Florida, not even a piece of salt compared to what they are 
you know, going through. And I just try to wrap my head around that, guys. It's the good Lord is going to get through this dog problem with us, Sean and I, in the same boat here with you, mister. Um, he's going to cure. He's also going to help those folks uh, cure. And we're doing everything that we can possibly do with thoughts, prayers. Um, like I said, Mark and his crew that helped me build the properties, they're down there working right now. So send some thoughts and prayers out with Mark and the crew. They actually do storm damage relief and then they help me build my properties. Uh, it's kind of an extra amenity for them in the season. And that's what they're down there working that storms or those storms guys, um, some FEMA relief stuff and um, keep them safe. He's gonna keep everybody safe. He's gonna get through, he's gonna help everybody get through this. And it's not going to be, take the complete shine off the entire season. I, I don't, I just won't, I just refuse to to get in that mindset and I refuse to let it ruin something as such as important to me uh, as the fall is because like I said it's my church it really is when I say that it really is my church love like me love me hate me I'm not I don't go to a I don't go to a building for my church uh, because of some past stuff that I've had happen um, but I do, I do spend a lot of time. My deer blind and my tree stand is my church, and it's not just doesn't. I just don't do that in the fall, right? When I'm on the road, a lot of times I'll drive for hours and hours and hours, and the radio never gets turned on. Is because I'm that tuned in um, to the good Lord. I really am to the dear Lord. Uh, so take that, guys. I wanted to share that with you because it kind of rattled me a little bit. And uh, at the end of closing here, that's kind of an update. That's why we're doing these podcasts to kind of um, just give you a little different look on the, into what, uh, what the other side of my world is. And I surely appreciate you guys being a part of it. Um, so looking forward to the next one. I've got some really cool things here, guys. One of the things I didn't touch on on the business side that I'll touch on share with you real quick here is I did not share with you is we are kind of finalizing the training camp, having some nightmare stuff with some uh, stuff that popped up with some editing features that we're trying to get done. The training camp online video series is gonna be done. It's now 10 chapters with a bonus 11, not six like it was before. Uh, it's really going to be great for a lot of people at a good price point, uh, going to help a lot of folks out and I really, really expect that to be a great thing. So that's coming. Uh, I'll throw kind of a another teaser out here for you. Um, you've seen that we are, won't go into great detail, but you've seen that we are, um, uh, we, we have always used the uh, real wood production feeders last several years for a lot of reasons. Um, sadly, real wood um, is not in business but we are let's just say this we are going to open a bunch of eyes on some new products that we got our hands in coming here shortly so i'll just leave it at that um really looking forward to that with you guys uh so that's that's cooking in the background and we are also looking to get some help with the podcast the social media platforms uh, and we're kind of in that final stages about who's going to come on. And I think you're going to see the, the whole editing side of this and the whole uh, professionalism side of it. Uh, some, a lot. There's somebody that's going to be hopefully taking that over and um, helping us out. Because as much as I'd like to do all of it myself, I just, I'm at the point where I, I can't do that, right? So... Uh, and who, who affects, if I'm not doing it correctly, you guys are the ones that it affects and I'm, I'm not, I don't want to do that, right? Because I want to still get that in, free information out to you. Uh, we have a Patreon account with some membership stuff as well, some paid membership stuff that we're doing. Um, we're going to continue to do the YouTube channel. We're going to put more emphasis on the, the farm family business and the Dear Lord podcast that we're doing now. And uh, we really, really have some great things coming here guys so surely appreciate everybody's support um like i said throw some prayers out to the folks down there um in north carolina and tennessee and also florida 
and um, South Carolina got a, got hit to uh, throw some prayers out to those guys, do everything you can possibly do to help. And um, also, I just uh, ask for kind of on a, on a family level, just send a prayer up for my son and um, hopefully the good Lord puts his hand on that. I know he will. And uh, we'll get through this, this kind of this big question mark where we are with that right now, right? So looking forward to Sunday. Sundays is our day to hear from him. And every day, every Sunday, uh, we get more and he, he, he gets through another week of it, right? So uh, surely appreciate everybody, guys. And we'll be bringing you some cool stuff here shortly. Got some guests coming into camp. Um, I think that's all we had to talk about uh, for this week's segment or this week's podcast. And we will see you guys on the next one.